Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Keystone Springdale 298BH. This is a quad bunk model, you have a big super slide in here, lots of great features to go over, starting with the kitchen. So if you take a look, you'll see the updated countertop in here. It is a seamless countertop, so you don't have any T-mold or anything to pop off. I do like the newer design as well. Uh, you can see, you know, it kind of has like some fake striations in here, but I think it looks pretty good. High-rise faucet there. It does come with the sink top cover, which you can use this as a cutting board. As always, I recommend just using one side. That way you keep the other side clean. And then underneath that is your single bowl sink. But because it is a seamless countertop, it does allow you to undermount that bowl. Right over here to the side is a three burner cooktop that is recessed. It does have the glass cover, so you can utilize that as prep space. Uh, when it's up, of course, it doubles as a backsplash. You do have this nice decorative one here as well. With the three burners, the front one's high output. It's a Furion, so you have the light here, uh, the button to, to light up your knobs. That also operates the light in your oven. If you move over to this side, underneath the sink, open that up for you, you'll see there is enough room for a trash can. You also have a drawer here, so a great spot for your flatware. Coming around to the front, you have an additional drawer here. Now, obviously you can use this for bathroom items if you want, maybe a good spot for some uh, hot pads, things like that. But also, I'll show you in a little bit that you do have a spot for jackets and shoes, maybe a good spot for some outerwear too. Right, and kind of the same thing here, right? Like if there's a spot for shoes, but you can put overflow in there, or if you want more kitchen items, you can do that. It's also worth noting there is an electrical outlet here, so if you need to plug in anything like coffee maker, blender, stuff like that, you got a spot to do it. Take a look up top, you do have storage right up there, microwave, and then hood underneath. Additional storage here above the fridge freezer. It is a Dometic fridge freezer combo. This unit runs off both propane and uh, electric and also has automatic switchover. Making our way back a little bit further, thermostat here. This unit does operate the ducted AC as well as the ducted heat. The, the heat is ducted through the floor. You can see you know, one of the ducts right here. Now, like anything else, there's always advantages and disadvantages to uh, ducting systems. The great thing about having it in the floor though is that they can place it wherever they want. It's not only restricted to where the furniture is. The bathroom is right back here. If you take a look, You'll see foot flush lever toilet. I'll take a seat here. I'm six foot tall now. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's a little cramped in here. You know, my, my toes are touching the tub as far as shoulders. If I try to kind of wedge them in between here, you know, I get a little stuck. Um, but you know, I mean, again, as long as I'm not spending a ton of time in here, I can definitely make it work. Over to the side is a sink top and vanity. You do have good countertop space, which is nice. Little cubby hole underneath for some extra rolls of toilet paper underneath the sink. Again, you have storage up top as well as some plumbing access electrical outlet, mirrored medicine cabinet, and then the shower over to this side. Now, when I stand in here, you can see that because of the skylight, I can stand up no problem. You can probably be, you know, maybe 6'2", maybe 6'3", still be able to stand up in certain spots without having to duck down, which is nice. Hand wand there, of course, to make showering up a little bit easier. Now, as we make our way out of the bathroom into the back area, we get into the quad bunk. So, You'll see the top bunks here, of course, bottom bunks as well, 300 pound weight capacity, which is great because if you're an adult, you can still make this work. Uh, and as far as size, I will kind of sneak in here to show you. So as I said, I'm six foot tall with my feet all the way against the wall. I still have, you know, some space up to the, the opposite wall. So you can, you know, probably be again, six one, six two, And uh, as long as you're under 300 pounds, you can still sleep in these bunks, which is pretty great. Right here, this one kind of throws me for a loop. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the manufacturer was trying, if they're trying to make like an additional possible bunk along the back. Um, you know, that, that would make these ones pretty short, in my opinion, no? Because you, you only have this much space, so that'd be a pretty small person. I don't know that I trust a person of that size to be up on the top bunk without some kind of rail. Um, I guess for me, I would probably use it if you have like a little dog or something that comes with camping with you. You know, maybe this can be their bed if they, they, they want to have them up here. I'm not 100% certain. Um, but what I, I did notice is right underneath, you will see you have a little bit of extra storage there. It's kind of hidden and tucked away, but you do have that. So again, if you do have a pet, maybe, you know, you can put some food and stuff in there. Otherwise, just use it for clothes. And, you know, again, I, I'm not sure what else you would use that for. But even if it wasn't there, this is still, you know, your common floor plan for your rear quad bunk here without slides is this setup right here. Uh, you will see up top that you have a uh, TV hookup, so if you want TV in here, that's where it would be located. And then underneath, a oh, little bit tough, brand new, open that up. I actually do like this. Most of the time they put shelves in here, but 
Springdale went with a hanging rod, which I honestly really prefer that because most of the kids' clothes I do hang up, and for the other clothes that uh, you fold, you know, you can find other places to put those. When we move back out into the main living area, you will see your super slide on the off door side. You see the dinette, the dinette is quite large. Uh, you obviously have plenty of room here for four people. I mean, you know, I'm fairly wide in the shoulders and I, I definitely have enough room for another person here, which is great. A little bit of elbow room, you know, that way if I'm getting after my food, you know, I'm not getting in the other person's way. Um, but of course, you, all, you definitely want a dinette in a family camper because it gives you a spot to have meals together, play games together. This does drop down into an additional sleeping space, but it won't really be adequate for an adult to be built more for other children. Uh, you will see that they have windows in lieu of storage above both the sofa and the dinette, kind of helping to try to bring in some natural light. You also have dual USB ports there in case you need to plug in any electronics. It's also worth noting underneath the dinette here, you have some lighting so that, you know, again, gives a, a kind of a cool little effect. And there is storage there as well. So if you want to access that storage, you can just lift that up. Moving back up, we get into the sofa. So this is a jackknife style sofa, but it does have the drop down armrest. That way it kind of creates like a pseudo theater seating area. If you just want the sofa, you can flip that back up. And of course, the great thing about a jackknife is all the storage you get underneath. Now, if you're sitting there, chances are you might want to watch some TV. This is where the TV goes. Uh, in, in this floor plan, in my opinion, I would definitely get a swing arm mount so you can kind of have it come around. So if in case you're sitting on the sofa, it might block the walkway a little bit, but it will make your TV viewing experience a little bit better. If you don't watch a lot of TV when you're camping, then you don't have to put anything here. You know, put a picture frame or something over all this. Um, underneath, you'll see your multimedia center there that is Bluetooth capable. Speakers on the side for some better sound quality. You'll see you have your old school jacks here to plug into the back of the TV if you want to watch a movie. And underneath, you'll see additional storage there. Now, we were up in this area a little bit earlier and I kind of talked about the extra storage here uh, by the kitchen countertop. And this is kind of what I was referring to. So you'll see right here, you have a bench seat, gives you a spot to sit down, put your shoes on. You actually have shoe storage, which I really like. And up above that, you have a spot to hang your jacket. So, you know, it gives you, again, kind of in combination, you have a lot of places to store some outerwear, like your shoes, jackets, you know, gloves, mittens, scarves, things like that. You will also see that you have uh, storage right here across the top with a nice little decorative pattern on there. So we move up into the bedroom, you'll see the queen bed right here in the center. Now they did go with an RV queen and for good reason. Uh, they tried to give you a lot in the back of the RV, so the bedroom is a little bit tighter. You'll see here, and granted I have a pretty big butt, but if I try to go by the door, it's, it is a little bit of a tight squeeze. Now there is still good storage underneath. You can see that right here. So they, they provided you plenty of storage space, which is great. And on both sides, you have a nightstand. And on the camp side, you'll also see you have your little uh, laundry chute. So that way you can just put a basket of clothes down there. It's right where the pass-through is. So throw your clothes down, go outside, open the pass-through, pull your clothes out, take it to the laundromat, good to go. You also have two electrical outlets. So if you need to plug in a CPAP machine or cell phone, you can do that. And if you hop up top, you will see the wardrobes here, mirror door so you can see yourself, hanging space. Plus you have the shelf connecting the two right across the top there. Uh, a couple other quick things on the ceiling. You will see this one is pre-wired for a second AC. So if you want one, it uh, already has the bracket, uh, the framing and everything to be able to hold a second AC as well as the wiring. Right over here, you will see a spot to hook up a TV. And on the opposite wall, if you want LTE signal, you can have that here. Now, mind you, that will have a separate phone plan, but at least you have the capability if you want it. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Keystone Springdale 298BH. Right up front, you will see this one comes with a power tongue jack. This makes it a lot easier to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. So all I have to do is flip the rocker switch here to raise and lower the tongue. You also see you have a light for added visibility at night. And in the rare event the motor fails, there is a manual override so you're not stuck at your campsite. Behind that, two 20 pound propane tanks with a cover. Rails here for your battery. Coming up the front is the diamond etch plating helping to protect that front end from rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. Coming around to the side, we'll open up the front storage compartment. If you take a look in there, you will see it is pretty wide door on this side, a little bit narrower on the other side, but still plenty of space to be able to fit in some of your wider items. This one does have power stabilizer jacks. This front one will operate the front two, the back one will operate the rear two. Remember, those are not to be used to level. They're purely to stabilize the RV so it doesn't rock around when you're walking around inside. 
Large power awning, touch a button to roll it out, same thing to have it go back in. LED light strip on there as well, so you have light at night. You see your main entrance here with three fold-out steps, grab handle as well for some added control when entering the RV. If you want outside TV, there is a bracket right here already mounted for you. Cable outlet and electrical outlet are right next to it. If you'd rather listen to music, you can certainly do that as well as you have two outside speakers which are connected to that multimedia center inside. And if we drop down below, you will see this one has a fully enclosed, insulated and heated underbelly. So that'll help keep out some road grime when you're traveling, as well as hopefully some of the rodents when you're storing it. And also will keep things a little bit warmer in the colder climates, like if you like camping in the fall. You'll see a black tank flush is actually on the camp side, which is a little more rare, but you know, it's just as easy to get to. You can just hook a hose up right here. Much simpler than sticking a hose down the toilet to wash out your black tank. Much more important in my opinion is this, which is the outside shower on the campsite. This is much more convenient because if you need, to, you need that water access, whether you're washing your hands, washing dishes outside, washing the dog, whatever it may be, uh, having that outside shower with both hot and cold water access on the campsite just makes it much more accessible. As we make our way to the back, you will see the spray port right here. Now, with the outside shower being so close and having hot water access, chances are I'd use that, but if you want to use the spray port, it is there for you. When we open up that outside kitchen, you'll see your two burner cooktop, storage up top, and your refrigerator here for both condiments and beverages, plus USB port right there on the back wall in case you need to charge some cell phones, tablets, whatever it may be. Coming around to the back, square tubular bumper with end caps so you have a spot to store your sewer hose. Also mounted to that is your spare tire, which is a very easy place to access it. And if you take a look right up top, you'll see this one has backup camera prep. So if you want backup camera, having that prep does make it easier to install. So you come around to the off door side, you'll see your cable inlet right there. Also, if we pop this guy open underneath the bunk on the off door side, you see additional storage here, which is wonderful. Because a lot of times you just don't have a lot of outside storage on travel trailers. You will also see your uh, 50 amp power supply. This is where it plugs in at. It is 50 amp because this one is prepped for that second AC. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Keystone Springdale 298BH. If you're interested in this travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.